المضارع المرفوع. Now in this lesson, we'll be learning finally the mansub and the majzum cases for the present tense. We'll also be discussing those special conditions or as I like to call them, those special factors that require us to use the mansub and the majzum cases. And we'll also be learning the markers, the alamat for the marfu', the mansub, and the majzum. And finally, we'll be taking a look at the Arabic verbal noun, the masdal. So inshallah, by the end of this lesson today, we would have acquired a solid handle, a solid grip over all of these topics, the past tense, the present tense and its three case endings, as well as the mustar, the verbal noun. So here are the contents for today's lesson. Right off the bat, we'll be looking at the Arabic verbal noun, the mustar, and looking at some examples drawn from the Quran. Afterwards, we'll be learning some verb forms. Now, you might recall from lesson number two that I introduced the concept of the awzan, but in this lesson, we'll actually be learning form two, three, four, and five. Form two, three, four, and five, four forms. And then in the following lesson, lesson number six, we'll be looking at forms six, seven, eight, and ten. Topic number three, we'll be looking at the difference between words that have variable case endings as well as verbs that take fixed case endings. Al-Kalimat al-Mu'araba wa al-Kalimat al mamniya Topic number four, we'll be learning the markers, the alamat for al-Fi'r mudari' al marfur And then topics five and six are al-Fi'r mudari' al mansub and al-Fi'r mudari' al majzum We'll be looking at the markers for each as well as the special factors that require us to use each. So let us begin, inshallah. Topic number one, the verbal noun, the masdar. The Arabic masdar, plural masadir, is an ism. Okay, it's an ism, it is a noun. It is the noun form of the verb or the act of the verb, the action of the verb, or the concept of the verb. So these are three different ways to think about the masdar. The noun form of the verb, the act of the verb, or the concept of the verb. In English, the closest equivalent would be the gerund. So if you're familiar with English grammar, you have gerunds and infinitives, which function as nouns. The verbal noun would probably be the gerund in English. Let's look at some examples. Here are two sentences in English. Number one, college students read every day. College students read every day. The word read, highlighted in blue, is a verb. It describes an action. But then we have sentence number two, reading is fun. So the word reading, highlighted in red, is a gerund. Its function is the subject of the sentence and it's treated like a noun. Example number two, I traveled the world versus tourists enjoy traveling. Notice again that the word traveled, highlighted in blue, is a verb. But the word traveling, in the context of the sentence, tourists enjoy traveling, is a noun. It's actually the direct object of the verb enjoy. So read and traveled are verbs. Reading and traveling are verbal nouns. And just like we make this distinction between verbs and verbal nouns in English, we also have that distinction in Arabic between the fi'l and the masdar. Now let's look at some examples of verbs and their associated masadir in Arabic. Hopefully this will give you a better idea of what the masdar actually means. The verb balagha yablughu means to come or to arrive. Its associated verbal noun, masdar, is albulugh. Al-Bulugh, which means the arrival. Jahila Yajhalu means to not know or to be ignorant. The associated verbal noun is Al-Jahl, Al-Jahl, which means ignorance. Shafa Yashfi means to heal or to cure someone of a sickness. Its verbal noun, its masdar, is Ashifa, Ashifa, which means the cure or healing, the process of curing or healing someone. Again, the masdar, the verbal noun, is the noun version of the verb. 
It's the action of the verb or the concept of the verb. Let's now go over some examples pulled straight out of verses from the Quran. In the interest of time, I've decided not to translate or not to necessarily translate each and every example. So I would highly encourage and recommend that you follow along using an English translation of the Quran. You can use tanzil.net or a hard copy of the English translation, whatever you prefer. Example number one, Rahmatan min rabbik innahu huwa samiul alim. The mustard here is rahma, rahma, which means mercy. This comes from the verb rahima yarham, to show mercy or to show compassion. Example number two, yafqahu qawli, yafqahu qawli. The mustard here is qawl, from the verb qala yaqulu, to say. Qawl means speech or statement or word. So it can mean any of these three definitions depending on the context of the ayah. ذَلِكَ الْكِتَابُ لَا رَيْبَ فِيهِ هُدًا لِلْمُتَّقِينَ The Muslim here is huda, huda, or hudan actually. Hudan, which means guidance, comes from the verb هَدَى يَهْدِي الْهُدًا الْهُدَى which means to guide. وَمِنْ آيَاتِهِ خَلْقُ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ The Muslim here is خَلْق, خَلْق, which means creation, the process or the act of creating from the verb خَلَقَ يَخْلُقُ to create فَتَمَنَّوا الْمَوْتَ إِن كُنْتُمْ صَادِقِينَ the مصدر is موت which means death from the verb مَاتَ يَمُوتُ which means to die مَاتَ يَمُوتُ الْمَوْتِ وَمَا يَكْفُرْ بِالْإِيمَانِ فَقَدْ حَبِطَ عَمَلُهُ the مصدر here is الْإِيمَان الْإِيمَان which means faith or belief, which comes from the form for verb amana yu'minu, which means to believe. Wala yahzun kaladina yusari runa fin kufr. Al kufr, which means disbelief, is the mustar coming from the verb kathara yakfur to disbelieve. And finally, Faman tabia hudaya fala khawfun alayhim wala hum yahzanun. The word khawf is the mustar for the verb khafa yahufu meaning to fear. So the verb the word khawf means fear. These are all very common words that appear with high frequency in the Quran. Now I have no doubt that you've come across, heard of, or perhaps even know the meanings of all of these words. These are very common words, like I said. What you may not have known before was that these are all verbal nouns. Rahma, qawl, hudan, khalq, maut, iman, kufr, khawf, uh, words like Islam. These are all verbal nouns, masadir, noun forms of their respective verbs. So that concludes our discussion of the verbal noun, the masdar in Arabic. Now it's time for us to switch gears and move on to al-awzan, the verb forms. If you haven't viewed the previous lessons, lessons 1, 2, 3, and 4, or you are rusty on these topics that I've covered previously, I would highly, highly recommend that you go back, watch these lessons again right now before proceeding. So go ahead and click on the links that will direct you to the appropriate lessons. Now, there's a side comment that I wish to make, and that is verb forms. The awzan are very, very, very important. The awzan are very important. Now, I've know, I know I've said this for so many things before, but verb forms would definitely, hands down, rank as the number one single most important item on your must-know list. You know, as a beginner, and intermediate student of the Arabic language. It is hands down the number one most important item. If this is the first time in your life encountering verb forms or the first time that you've been formally introduced to verb forms, then I must say I feel very privileged and honored to be that individual to introduce this to you. That's how important verb forms are. If you learn verb forms well, you'll be doing yourself a tremendous favor for the rest of your life.
In this lesson, we'll be learning forms 2, 3, 4, and 5. I was done 2, 3, 4, and 5. And this is the format I'll be using to teach this information to you. On the top, we'll have the form. Now, keep in mind that a form consists of three components. We have al maldi the past tense, al mudadir the present tense, and the mustar, the verbal noun. And we have a stencil for each using the placeholder roots fa'ala. So this will be displayed on the top. To the bottom left hand corner, I will have a list of special notes. These are special observations about characteristics or traits unique to this particular form. And then to the bottom right hand corner, I will have a chart displaying common verbs of that form found in the Qur'an. So let's begin by reviewing Form 1. Actually, one more thing. So the best way to learn these verb forms, uh, especially the harder ones, 2, 3, 4, etc. The best way to learn, you have two strategies. Number one is to listen, to repeat and listen to the sound, listen to the phonetics. And number two is by way of example, looking for representative verbs of each form. So let's review form one. Form one in the Maldi can be fa'ala or fa'ila or fa'ula. In the Mudadir, yaf'alu, yaf'ilu or yaf'ulu. So form one is the simplest form. It only consists of three letters. Those are the three radicals, the three root letters of the word. The middle vowel is variable. This means that you can have either a fatha a fatha, a lamma, or a kasra on top of the ayn. And the middle vowel in the past tense and the present tense may not necessarily be the same. So we talked about this in lesson number four. You can have daraba yalribu, fatha, kasra. You can have shahida yashhad, kasra, fatha. You can have kataba yaktub. Or you can have cases where, where they are the same. So there's no way for us to predict uh, the middle vowel. There's also no way for us to predict the verbal noun, the mustar. There are so many different forms. So you can have kataba yaktub al kitaba. You can have qara yaqra al qira. Qala yaqulu al qawl rahima yarham al rahma. So as you can tell, there are so many different types of masadir for form one. You just have to memorize it. So form one is tricky because the past tense, the present tense, and the verbal noun must be memorized all together as a set. There's no way for us to predict the middle vowel, and there is no way for us to predict the mustal. Here are some common form one verbs found in the Quran. Ja'ala yaj'alu al ja'al, which means to make. Khalaqa yakhluq al khalq, to create. Zalama yadlim al zulm, to wrong or to oppress. عَلِمَ يَعْلَمْ الْعِلْمْ To know. عَمِلَ يَعْمَلْ الْعَمَلْ To work or to do. Okay, let's start form two. Form two sounds like this. فَعَلَ for the Maldi. يُفَعِلُ for the Maldi. التَّفْعِيل for the Masdar. فَعَلَ يُفَعِلُ التَّفْعِيل فَعَلَ يُفَعِلُ التَّفْعِيل Notice the unique characteristic about form 2 is the shadda, the shadda on top of the middle root letter. This creates a doubling of the sound or delay in the sound. Fa'ala, yufa'ilu. Form 2 is transitive. This means it usually takes at least one direct object. So the action of the verb is performed or done to something or someone. Form 2 also adds a causative meaning to form 1 which means you're causing someone to do something. And an example of this would be, let's say, Form 1, عَلِمَ يَعْلَمْ عَلِمَ يَعْلَمْ which means to know. If we change that into Form 2 by adding a shadda, it becomes عَلَّمَ يُعَلِّمُ التَّعْلِيمُ to cause someone to know which means to teach. So the word عَلَّمَ in form 2 means to teach. Another example, ثَبَتَ يَثْبُتْ means to be firm or strong in form 1. In form 2, ثَبَتَ يُثَبِّتُ التَّثْبِيتْ means to make someone strong, to strengthen. 
or to make something strong, like a case or a claim. So it means to confirm or to substantiate. So thabbata means to strengthen or to confirm and substantiate something. So those are examples of Form 2 verbs adding a causative meaning to Form 1, making someone or something do the action of Form 1. In some cases, Form 2 can also be an intensification of Form 1. For example, qatala yaqtul means to kill, to murder in Form 1. Form 2, qatala yuqatilu at-taqtil is an intensification of that, and that means to massacre. So qatala actually means to massacre. Here are some examples of common form two verbs found in the Quran. Kadhaba yukadhibu at means to call someone a liar or to reject. Adhaba yu'adhibu at to punish or to torment. Bashara yubashiru at tabshir to give glad tidings, to give good news. Sabbaha yusabihu at tasbih to praise or to glorify. Nazzala yunazzilu atanzil to send down to reveal. So for each form that we'll be covering, forms two, three, four, and five, I've decided to pick one verb for us to conjugate in the past tense and in the present tense. And this is to illustrate that the conjugation rules we've learned in lessons two, three, and four for the past and present tense apply to all verb forms. And this is a point I've been repeating over and over again. These conjugation rules apply to all forms. So we'll be demonstrating that using this slide. Now, before we start, I would like you to listen. Again, listen very carefully to the sounds. Listen to the relationship between the stencil, the fa'ala, and the actual verb. And listen for the defining trait, that special unique characteristic about the form. In this case, it's the shadda, that delay, that doubling of the sound. Also, you'll notice that I've omitted the pronouns, the standalone personal pronouns, huwa, hum, hiya, hunna, etc. Uh, this is to give us a chance to actually practice and apply the strategy of memorizing the chart, which I mentioned in lesson four. So let's start. If we have the root letters kaf, the, and ba, Apply to form two. This gives us the verb kadhaba. Fa'ala kadhaba. Fa'alu kadhabu. Fa'alat kadhabat. Fa'alna kadhabna. Fa'alta kadhabta. Fa'altum kadhabtum. فَعَلْتِ كَذَّبْتِ فَعَلْتُنَّ كَذَّبْتُنَّ فَعَلْتُ كَذَّبْتُ فَعَلْنَا كَذَّبْنَا So that's the past tense. Moving on to the mudari' the present tense. يُفَعِلُ يُكَذِّبُ Yufa'iluna yukadhibuna. Tufa'ilu tukadhibu. Yufa'ilna yukadhibna. Tufa'ilu tukadhibu. Tufa'iluna tukadhibuna. Tufa'ilina tukadhibina. تفاعلنا تكذبنا أفاعل أكذب نفاعل نكذب Of course, I've chosen to slow down, to enunciate, and to exaggerate the sounds and the vowels. And that's because I'm teaching this material. So I want you to pay attention to the phonetics. Now, of course, in real life, I wouldn't be speaking so slowly and, you know, pulling the vowels or pulling the sounds. Here are some examples, some real examples of Form 2 verbs taken straight from the Qur'an in the context of different ayat. Ya ayyuhan nabiyyu lima tuhadlimu ma ahallallahu lak. The verb tuhadlimu is a Form 2 verb following the pattern tufa'ilu. حرم يحرم التحريم 
هو الذي أيدك بنصره وبالمؤمنين أيد the verb أيد يؤيد التأييد following the pattern فعل يفعل التفعيل notice the شدة pay attention to the شدة on top of the form 2 verb وألف بين قلوبهم ألف يؤلف التأليف form 2 كذبت قبلهم قوم نوح وعاد وفرعون ذو الأوتاد كذبت This is conjugated for here in the past tense The verb is كذب يكذب التكذيب Now moving on to form 3 The form 3 set فعل يفاعل المفاعلة فعل in the ماضي يفاعل in the مضارع المفاعلة in the مصدر So what do you observe that is unique about this verb form in terms of sound? It's the alif, right? The elongation, the a uh, sound that we attach to the first root letter فعل Form 3 adds an associative meaning to form 1 so, an example would be the form 1 verb عَمِلَ يَعْمَلْ To work or to do. In form 3, we would have عَامَلَ يُعَامِلُ المعاملح, Which means to deal or to treat in terms of dealing or treating someone. So, مُعَامَلَ describes relations, relationships, dealing with people. Another possible verbal noun form, another مصدر for form 3 as is الفعال. الفعال. So you can have المفاعلة or الفعال. That's another alternative. Here are some examples of Form 3 verbs found in the Quran. To struggle, جاهد يجاهد المجاهدة or الجهاد. قاتل يقاتل المقاتلة القتال which means to fight or to combat. هاجر يهاجر المهاجر which means to emigrate past tense conjugation for form 3 using the root letters جيم ها and دال we have جاهد which means he struggled جاهد فعل جاهد فعلوا جاهدوا فعلت جاهدت فعلنا جاهدنا فعلت جاهدت فعلتم جاهدتم فعلتي جاهدتي فعلتن جاهدتن فعلت جاهدت فاعلنا جاهدنا Again, the defining characteristic of form 3 is that elongation, that alif after the first root letter. Present tense conjugation for form 3 using the same verb. يفاعل يجاهد يفاعلون يجاهدون تفاعل تجاهد يفاعلنا يجاهدنا تفاعلوا تجاهدوا تفاعلون تجاهدون تفاعلين تجاهدين تفاعلنا تجاهدنا أفاعل أجاهد نفاعل نجاهد Examples of Form 3 verbs taken from the Qur'an In Surah Al-Baqarah وَقَاتِلُوا فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ الَّذِينَ يُقَاتِلُونَكُمْ Here we have two instances of the verb قَاتَلَ The first one is actually a fi'l amr, a command And then here we have يُقَاتِلُونَ fi'l مُضَارِعْ مَرْفُوعْ قَاتَلَ فَاعَلَ يُقَاتِلُوا يُفَاعِلُوا Form 3 now pay attention to the alif sound. والذين آمنوا وهاجروا وجاهدوا في سبيل الله هاجر and جاهد form three verbs. ألم تر إلى الذين نافقوا 
Alam tara ila ladina nafaku nafaka form three with the alif illa ladina ahatum minal mushtikina thumma lam yankusukum shay'a wa lam yudahiru alaykum ahada ahada we have ahatum conjugated for antum in the past tense and then we have yudahiru yudahiru so these are all form three verbs taken from the Quran. Now let's move on to form four. The form four set Afala Yufailu El Ifal Afala Yufailu El Ifal. What do we notice? We notice that there is a hamza in the front. We've added a hamza to the front of the verb, but only in the past tense, Afala and in the Mustar Al Ifal. The Hamza disappears in the form uh, present tense form يفعل. now a form 4 is somewhat similar to form 2 in that both are transitive so form 2 and 4 generally take at least one direct object and form 4 also has this causative meaning uh, effect it adds a causative meaning to form 1 so let's look at some examples of form 4 these are common form 4 verbs in the Quran أَخْرَجَ يُخْرِجُ الْإِخْرَاجِ So the form of one verb of this would be خَرَجَ To leave or to exit. Form four, أَخْرَجَ means to make someone leave, which means to expel, to drive someone out. So أَخْرَجَ means to expel, to kick someone out of their home, for example. Or it can mean to bring out, to publicize, like a piece of information. Uh, another example of the causative meaning is form one verb fasada yafsid. Fasada yafsid means to be bad or to be spoiled. Now converting that to form four, afsada yufsidu al ifsad to make something bad, to cause something to be bad, which means to corrupt or to cause mischief. Afsada yufsid al ifsad. But anyway, going back to form four verbs in the Quran, we have akhraja yukhrij al ikhraj to drive someone out to expel. Arusala yursilu al irsal, very, very common word verb meaning to send. Ashraka yushriku al ishraq to associate partners to commit shirk. Aslama yuslim al islam to submit. So the verb, the word islam literally means submission. Right, it's the mustar for the verb aslama, submission. Arada yuridu al irada, to want or to desire. Now this verb is slightly irregular because it is hollow, so it doesn't perfectly fit onto the pattern, but it's pretty close. Arada afala yufailu yuridu. It's just that the middle, um, that middle letter, has swallowed part of the vowel. So you have yuridu in elongation instead of yufailu. Uh, and irada has a tamarbulta at the very end. This is a form four verb. So the reason I put it on here, even though we haven't learned hal verbs, is because this is very, very common in the Quran. It comes up all the time. Form four, past tense conjugation, using the root letters seen, lam, and meme, we have aslama. So af'ala Huwa aslama. Af'alu aslamu. Af'alat aslamat. Af'alna aslamna. Af'alta aslamta. Af'altum aslamtum. Af'alti aslamti. Af'altunna aslamtunna. أَفْعَلْتُ أَسْلَمْتُ أَفْعَلْنَا أَسْلَمْنَا In the present tense, يُفْعِلُوا يُسْلِمُوا يُفْعِلُونَ يُسْلِمُونَ تُفْعِلُوا تُسْلِمُوا يُفْعِلْنَا يُسْلِمْنَا تُفْعِلُوا تُسْلِمُوا تُفْعِلُونَ تُسْلِمُونَ 
تفعلين تسلمين تفعلنا تسلمنا أفعل أسلم نفعل نسلم Form four verbs taken from the Quran. Yuriduna an Yuriduna an yutufiu nur Allahi bi afwahihim. So we have the verb yuriduna. They want or they desire. Form four verb. Qala aslam tu li Rabbi al alamin. Aslam tu. Right. Afal tu. Wallahu ar kasahum bima kasabu. Ar kasa afala. إنا أرسلنا نوحا إلى قومه أرسلنا أفعلنا. So again, the defining characteristics of form four is that there is a hamza at the very front in the past tense, and then in the present tense, the we have يفعلو يفعلو the fa the first root letter actually takes the sukun, and then in the مصدر we have the hamza again الإفعال. Last form for today, form five. Form five. This is the form five set for the melody. تفعل تفعل المضارع يتفعل المصدر التفعل تفعل يتفعل التفعل. What do we notice? What have we added? Well, we've added two things. Number one, we've fixed a ت to the very front of the verb. And number two, we've added a shadda on top of the middle root letter. So there's a ta in the front, and then we have a shadda on top of the ayn. Tafa'ala, tafa'ala. The meaning of form five is very interesting. It adds a reflexive meaning to form two. So we have the form two verb, and then if you do the action to yourself, performing the action on oneself, that is the meaning of form five. So it's reflexive. An example would be form two verb ذكرا ذكرا يذكر التذكير, which means to remind, to remind someone. Form five تذكرا يتذكر التذكر. You're doing the action to yourself, so to remind oneself. What does that mean? It means to remember, to remember. So form five تذكرا means to remember. Here are some common form five verbs found in the Quran. Like I just said, تذكر يتذكر التذكر, to remind oneself or to remember. توكل يتوكل التوكل, to place one's trust in someone or something. تبين يتبين التبين, to become clear. Conjugation for form five in the past tense, using the root letters the. كاف in الراء we have تذكر تذكر to remember تفعل تذكر تفعل تذكر تفعلت تذكرت تفعلنا تذكرنا again pay attention to the تاء the sound of the تاء in the very front and the sound of the شدة Right, that small delay in the pronunciation of the word that tells you there's a shadda. Those are the defining unique characteristics of form five. Tafa'alta, tadakarta, tafa'altum, tadakartum, tafa'alti, tadakarti, tafa'altunna, tadakartunna, tafa'altu. تذكرت تفاعلنا تذكرنا Form 5 in the present tense Same verb يتفاعل يتذكر يتفاعلون يتذكرون تتفاعل تتذكر يتفاعلنا يتذكرنا تتفاعل تتذكروا تتفاعلون تتذكرون تتفاعلين تتذكرين 
تتفاعلنا تتذكرنا أتفاعل أتذكر نتفاعل نتذكر Examples of Form 5 verbs taken from the Qur'an أفلا تتذكرون أفلا تتذكرون Notice how there are two ta's in front. So one of the ta's belongs to the form 5 stencil. The other ta belongs to the pattern. Tafa'aluna. It's part of uh, the antum conjugation. Example number two. Afala yatadabbaruna al Quran. Yatadabbaruna yatafa'aluna. Liyaghfira laka Allahu ma taqaddama min zambika wa ma taakhar. So we have two verbs in this ayah, both are form 5, taqaddama and ta'akhara. So the root letters are qaf, dal, and mim, and hamza, kha, and ra. Last example, faqalu ala Allahi tawakkalna, a very common verb in the Quran, tawakkala. We have different forms of this. Uh, you have mutawakkilun, which is ism fa'il, but this is something we'll learn in the future, inshallah. Now, this brings us to the end of our discussion of Al-Awzan in today's lesson. We've covered forms 2, 3, 4, and 5. Here is a summary chart. I want you to please memorize this chart. And again, the two strategies for doing so, number one, to repeat. So repeat these to yourself out loud. فَعَلَى يُفَعِلُ التَّفْعِيلُ Focusing on the sounds. So if you need to enunciate or to exaggerate the sounds, do that, do that. That's what my teachers have recommended me to do when I was learning this. For example, in form three, you have fa there's an elongation, make it long, make it extra long, so you know it's there. Okay, that's how you train your ears to pick up these cues. Uh, form five, tafa'ala, tafa'ala, enunciate the ta and the, and the shadda. Strategy number two, learn using examples. So go back to the previous slides and look at those examples. Uh, open up the Mus'haf, the Qur'an, and pick a page and just look for these verbs. Okay, look for these patterns. The more you see real-life examples, the faster you'll be able to master these verb forms. Okay, we're going to switch gears and move on to a new topic, the topic of markers. Now, I feel this is the right time for me to introduce a new concept, the concept of variable case endings versus fixed case endings. Al-kalimat al-mu'raba wa al-kalimat al-mabniya. If you use classical grammar texts or classical curricula, you will definitely cover this topic and use these terms, mu'raba and mabniya. Uh, I'm going to try to break this down in the simplest way possible. Arabic words can be categorized into two groups in terms of case endings. Group number one, mu'raba. Group number two, mabniya. Mu'raba words have variable case endings. Variable case endings. Why are they variable? Because the ending depends on the word's function or role in the sentence or on the presence of special factors. So an example would be the word kitab. You can have kitabun, kitaban, or kitabin. That is a variable case ending. The ending of the word is different depending on the word's function or the presence of special factors. Category number two, mabniya, al kalimat al mabniya. These words have fixed, fixed case endings. These are constant, unchanging. That means the ending is completely unaffected by the word's function or role in the sentence or by the presence of special factors. So basically, these words endings don't really care about what's going on in the context or in the sentence. They are fixed. They're not going to change. So those are the key terms. Mu'raba means variable case endings. Mabniya means fixed case endings. Okay, now you might be wondering which words belong in which category. So on the top, we have the box Al-Kalimat. This is the gross totality of all words in the Arabic language. We can break this down into al-mu'raba, variable case endings, or al-mabniya, fixed case endings, the two major umbrella groups. Under al-mu'raba, we have 
two categories as well. We have al afal al mudari'. This is the present tense, and we have most asma. You can think of these as nouns. So most nouns or most asma rather, all words in Arabic that we would consider nouns in English are mu'araba. They take variable case endings. What are the case endings for the present tense for al afal mudari'? Except for the feminine plural, we have marfu' mansub and majzum. So we've talked about, we've mentioned in passing that these are the three case endings for the present tense. And then for asma, we also have different case endings. We have marfu' mansub and something called the majrur. So notice how the marfu' and the mansub are shared between verbs and nouns. But we have the majzum, which is unique to the past, the present tense verb, and the majrur tense, which is unique to the ism. And we'll talk about this in much more detail later. Depending on the case, we have a unique and appropriate marker for the word, alama. So each of these cases, the marfu' and the mansub and the majzum, the marfur, the mansub, and the majrur will take an appropriate alama. What about the mabniya category? Mabniya words include al ah, uh, the past tense. Okay, so all past tense verbs are mabniya, they are fixed in their case ending. We have al the pronouns, huwa, whom, hiya, anta, antuma, antum, anti, antunna. All these are fixed, mabniya. So anta is always going to be anta, regardless of uh, the context, regardless of any spe special factors around it. And we have others as well. And of course, the feminine plural present tense. So the hunna and the antunna verbs, yaf'alna and taf'alna, those are considered mabniya. They are fixed. They don't take variable case endings like other present tense verbs do. Also note that the term alama, meaning marker, is used only for mu'araba words, only for this category right here. Words that are mabniya do not take markers, do not take alamat. What are markers? Markers are of two types. They can either be letters, huruf, or they can also be harakat, short vowels. Now this depends on the word, it also depends on the case. What are the huruf? They are alif, ya, nun, and waw. Alif, ya, nun, and waw. That is your selection of huruf for markers. The harakat, fatha, dhamma, kasra, and sukun. Or kasra, dhamma, fatha, and sukun. These are the short vowels. And again, the term alama or marker is used only for words that are mabni, oh, for, sorry, only for words that are mu'araba, mu'araba, not for words that are mabniya. So we are now ready to formally tackle case endings. Here are the case ending markers, the alamat for al fir al mudari al marfu' which we've covered in the last lesson. Now, the present tense can actually be broken out into three groups. The first group, taf'alna and yaf'alna. These are the verbs for hunna and antunna, the feminine plural verbs. Like I mentioned previously, these are mabniya, they are fixed, which means we don't distinguish between marfu', mansub, or majzum, because in all cases, in all conditions, in all contexts, these are going to be the same. Their forms are fixed. And this noon is called noon and niswa. Noon and niswa, the feminine plural noon. This noon is permanently attached, okay, never comes off. Now let's look at the other two groups of present tense verbs that are mu'araba. We have in one group yaf'alu, af'alu, naf'alu, and taf'alu. These are the verbs for the pronouns huwa, ana, nahnu, hiya, and anta. The marker for these verbs in the marfu' is the dhamma, the dhamma at the end. Yaf'alu, af'alu, naf'alu, and taf'alu. The second class of mu'araba verbs are the verbs for whom, anti, and antum. Yaf'aluna, taf'alina, taf'aluna. What's the marker for the marfu'? The marker is called thubut anun. 
Dubut Anun, which is translated roughly as the presence of the noon. So here we have a letter, a harf, as the marker. And over here we have the lamma, a harka, a short vowel as the marker. Notice that this noon in yaf'aluna is not the same noon as in yaf'adna. This noon is a marker and it can actually be dropped. It can actually be dropped. This noon, however, is permanently fixed. Uh, one side note for this group over here, we also have the two dual verbs, yaf'alani uh, and taf'alani. These will be covered in lesson number six, inshallah. So for now, don't worry about this so much. Just remember that for the present tense, we can have three categories. Two are mu'raba. One of them takes the lamma as a marker. The other takes the presence of the noon, thubut and noon as the marker. And the third category, the feminine plural verbs, are mabniya. They are fixed. Now we'll be looking at some examples of al-fi' al-mudari' al marfu' taken from the Qur'an. I want you to pay attention to the marker. Pay attention to the verb, first of all and then pay attention to the marker. So the marker should either be a dhamma or a noon, depending on the verb itself. Example number one, الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا يُقَاتِلُونَ فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ What's the marker? The marker is the presence of the noon, thubut and noon. What's the form of this verb? يُقَاتِلُونَ There's a long alif, يُفَاعِلُونَ This is a form three verb. Example number two, أَفَلَا تَعْقِلُونَ تَعْقِلُونَ We see that noon, this is conjugated for أَنْتُمْ So يُقَاتِلُونَ is conjugated for whom? تَعْقِلُونَ conjugated for أَنْتُمْ The marker is ثُبُوتْ النون And this is an example of a form one verb. Example number three, يُفَصِّلُ الْآيَاتِ لِقَوْمِ يَعْلَمُونَ يُفَصِّلُ follows the pattern yufa'ilu and it takes a dhamma a dhamma so this is conjugated for huwa the marker is a dhamma this is an example of a form two verb because of the shadda yufasilu yufa'ilu of course we have another verb here ya'lamuna a form one this is conjugated for whom the marker is a noon next example afala yatadabbaruna al-qur'an yatadabbaruna we see the noon at the end. This is conjugated for whom? Whom yatadabbaruna? The alama is the presence of the noon. And this is an example of a form 5 verb. Last example. فَإِنَّكَ لَا تُسْمِعُ الْمَوْتَى تُسْمِعُ تُسْمِعُ We see the dhamma at the end. And that is the marker for the marfu' And this is an example of a form 4 verb. So notice how again we have two different markers. We have either the noon or the dhamma. The noon is used for those verbs conjugated for whom, antum, and anti. And the rest of the verbs take the dhamma. And also remember that al marfu' the marfu' case is used in situations where there's nothing special going on. So it's the default case used when there are no special factors in the sentence. So that's that for the marfu'. Now let's move on to mansub. Al-fi'l al-mudari' al-mansub. In the presence of special factors called nawasib, the present tense case that we must use is the mansub case. Uh, we don't have a choice. In the presence of a nawasub, we have to use the mansub case, which means the verb must take a mansub marker. There are a total of 10 nawasub, 10 of these special factors that require us to use the mansub. And in, in this lesson right now, we'll be covering two of the most common ones. And they are an, an the particle an, and lam ta'alil, lam ta'alil. Uh, what is lam ta'alil? In the phrase liyafa'ala, liyafa'ala, the lam fixed to the front of the verb, that is lam ta'alil. 
So definitions. Un means that or to, that or to, and the precise meaning actually depends on the context, and it might depend on the verb preceding it coming before it. What does la matalil mean? It means in order to. So to, as in in order to, or so that. So the verb, the word uh, ta'alil, the word ta'alil literally means justification or rationale. So lam ta'alil is the lam for justification. So these are two very common in the Welsh And they require us to use the mansub case ending for the present tense. So what are the mansub markers? On the far right, we have a column containing the marfu' verbs. On the top, we have af'alu, yaf'alu, naf'alu, and taf'alu. The marker is the dhamma. On the bottom, yaf'aluna, taf'aluna, taf'alina. The marker being thubut and noon, the presence of the noon. Now let's see what happens. Let's observe what change occurs when we add a nelsu. So let's la add an in front of each verb and see what we have. We get an af'ala, an yaf'ala, an naf'ala, an taf'ala. What happens when we add la mata'alil? We get li af'ala, li yaf'ala, li naf'ala, li taf'ala. What do we notice? We notice that instead of a dhamma, we have a fatha, a fatha on top of every last letter of the verb. What about the bottom category? Yaf'aluna, taf'aluna, taf'alina. When we add an in front of each verb, we get an yaf'alu, an taf'alu, an taf'ali. And when we add lam ta'alil, we have li yaf'alu, li taf'alu, li taf'ali. What do we observe that has changed? What's different? We've dropped the noon. We've dropped the noon. So for yaf'aluna and taf'aluna, we've repl we've omitted or erased the noon, and we've left an alif at the end, an alif. But for anti, we simply drop the noon and leave it as a ya. So again, these are the two classes, two classes of present tense verbs that are mu'araba. The top one takes a fatha as the mansub marker, a fatha. In the presence of an or lam ta'alil or any nawalsib, the fi'r mudari' must be mansub. And if it is conjugated for ana, huwa, nahnu, anta or hiya, it must take a fatha as its alama. On the other hand, if we have conjugation for whom, antum, and anti, the marker for mansub is dropping the noon. Dropping the noon. Here is a summary of that information. Yaf'ala, af'ala, naf'ala, taf'ala. The marker here is the fatha. Fatha for the mansub. On the other hand, for the verbs yaf'aluna, taf'alina, and taf'aluna in the marfu' In the mansub, we have to drop the noon, drop the noon. And this in Arabic is called hadh an noon, hadh an noon. And of course, the hunna and antuna verbs are mabniya, they are fixed. In order to better illustrate what an and lam ta'alil actually mean, I'll be going over some examples in this slide of their usage. Inna Allaha ya'murukum an tazbahu baqarah. Translation number one. Indeed, Allah commands you to slaughter a cow. So here, an is translated as to. We have an followed by al-fi'r mudari' al mansub tazbahu. The marker is hadth an noon, dropping the noon. Translation number two. Indeed, Allah commands you that you slaughter a cow. That you slaughter a cow. So here, an is translated as that. Now, the first translation, Allah commands you to slaughter a cow, this is probably more familiar to you. This is a more colloquial, more direct way of expressing uh, the same thoughts. But we can probably agree that the meaning is essentially the same between both. Uh, believe it or not, translation number two, indeed Allah commands you that you slaughter a cow, this is actually more correct grammatically. Because, this is a conjugation for you, 
and that is reproduced in the English. But again, the meaning is basically the same. We're talking about the same thing. So it's a matter of preference which translation you choose. Next example, فِيهِ رِجَالٌ يُحِبُّونَ أَنْ يَتَطَحَّرُوا In it are men who love to purify themselves. And it here refers to the masjid. Now, an it can be translated as to, or it can be translated as that. In it are men who love that they purify themselves. Same case as the above. Take home message, an means to or that. Now moving on to lam ata'alil, lam ata'alil, the lam for justification or rationale. Qala akharaqataha li tughriqa ahlaha. He said, did you make a hole in it in order to drown its people? So the lam gives us an explanation, a justification for the previous action. Why did you make a hole in it? Li tughriqa ahlaha in order to drown its people. So this is actually part of a longer conversation taking place between Musa السلام, and Khidr uh, that occurs in Surah Al-Kahf. Next example. وَقَدَّرَهُ مَنَازِلَ لِتَعْلَمُوا عَدَدَ السِّنِينَ وَالْحِسَابِ لِتَعْلَمُوا Here, the translation, and he, referring to Allah, and he has determined for it, i.e. the moon, phases so that you may know the number of years and account of time. Why did Allah determine for phases? لِمَاذَا قَدَّرَهُ مَنَازِلْ لِتَعْلَمُوا In order, so that you may know. In order for you to know. The number of years and the account of time. Take home message for Lama Ta'alil. The Lama Ta'alil answers the question why. لِمَاذَا And its meaning is in order to and so that. So after an or after lama ta'alil, we have to use al fir al mudari al nansub. Al fir al mudari al nansub. Examples of al fir al mudari al nansub taken from the Quran. I want you to pay attention to two things or three things. But number one, al the nasib. What is the special factor that require us to use the nansub case ending? And number two, what is the marker? And finally, the form. So example number one. In order that we may test you. So the nalsib here is lam ata'alil. What is the marker? It is the fatha li nabluwa. This is the verb bala yablu. We have a fatha because this is in the mansub because of the lama ta'alil. And nablu is a form, one verb. Example number two. Yuriduna an yutufi'u nur Allahi bi afwahihim. The nasib is the an. What is the marker? The marker is the dropping of the noon. Hadith an noon. Yutufi'u in al narfu' is yutufi'una. Altfa'a yutufi'u. So this is an example of a form oops, example of a form for verb. And another clue that tells us that the marker is the dropping of the noon is that there's an alif left over. An alif left over next to a wow. So this is a very interesting, uh, very interesting relationship, very interesting construction that tells us that previously in the marfu' we had a noon, but it's dropped because of the nasli. وَإِذْ يَمْكُرُ بِكَ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا لِيُثْبِتُوكَ Again, we have لَمَ تَعْلِيلْ لِي And the marker here is dropping of the noon. Dropping of the noon. لِيُثْبِتُوا Where is the alif? Well, we don't have the alif because we've attached an objective pronoun, the kaf. But we still have that wow over there. It's a telltale sign that previously in the marfu' we had a noon. This is an example of a form four verb. The marker is the fatha, and this is a form one verb. We have an, 
followed by Fir Mudari Mansub to Alim to Alima. So we see the Fatha, that is the marker. And this is an example of a form two verb, the Shadda. Alama you Alim to Alim. Finally, Asa Rabbukum ayu kafira ankum sayyatikum. We have the Nelsib an followed by al fi'l mudhari' mansub yukaffira with the marker fatha yukaffira and this is again an example of a form two verb because of the shadda kaffara yukaffiru at takfir so that's that for the mansub case ending now we'll be talking about the last the third and final fi'l mudhari' case ending the majzum in the presence of special factors called jawazim, the present tense verb must take the majzum case, which means it also must take a majzum marker. There are approximately 18 jawazim. Two of the most common jawazim, which we will cover right now, are lam and lam al amr. Lam and lam al amr. So lam is used to negate the past. And lam al amr is the lam for commands. The lam for commands. Notice how we also had lam a ta'alil, which is a nasib, but lam al amr is a jawazim. So there are different types of lam in Arabic, just like there are different types of ma. So you want to uh, distinguish between these different types of lam because they require us to use different grammar rules. We have lam al amr, lam a ta'alil. We also have uh, lam as harf jar, lam al juhud, etc. What are the majzum markers? Let's take a look. When we add lam in front of a verb, in front of af'alu, yaf'alu, naf'alu, or taf'alu, let's look at what we have. We get lam af'al, lam af'al, lam yaf'al, lam naf'al, and lam taf'al. When we add lam al-amr, the lam for commands, we get li af'al, li yaf'al, Li naf'al and li taf'al. When we add lam to yaf'aluna, taf'aluna, and taf'alina, we get lam yaf'alu. This is a typo. Lam yaf'alu, lam taf'alu, lam taf'ali. Adding lam al amr, we get li yaf'alu, li taf'alu, and li taf'ali. So these are the two groups of present tense. The ones on the top originally took a dhamma in the marfu'. The ones on the bottom took a noon, thubut and noon in the marfu'. But when we add a jawazim, a jazim, such as lam or lam al amr, the marker becomes for the top the sukun. Lam af'al, li af'al. And for the bottom, the marker becomes hazz. A noon, dropping of the noon, dropping of the noon. Now you might be thinking to yourself, isn't this the same marker for the mansub? We also dropped the noon when we added um, an or lam ta'alil, right? We have an yafalu. Yes, that's exactly correct. Dropping of the noon, has a noon, is the alama for the majzum and for the mansub, for both of them, for these verbs, for the verbs conjugated for whom. Uh, antum and anti. Here is a summary of the case ending markers for the majzum yaf'al, af'al, naf'al, and taf'al. That's the sukun. And then for these verbs yaf'alu, taf'ali, taf'alu, we have hadth and noon, dropping of the noon. Important note down here there is actually a third marker for the majzum. There's a third marker but it is seen relatively less often. So it's a little less common than these, which is why I decided to discuss it later. So don't worry too much about this. For now, just note that the majzum markers are the sukun or dropping of the noon, hath and noon. What does lam and lam uh, sorry, what does lam and lam al-amr mean? Let's go through some examples of their usage. Lam yadhab. Lam yadhab. So lam is used. Lam is used to negate the past tense. Lam yadhab is a construction composed of lam 
plus al mudari al majzum with a sukun. We can also say ma dhahaba, ma dhahaba. This construction consists of ma plus al madhi, the past tense. The meaning for both phrases is the same. He didn't go. So lam yadhab and ma dhahaba are semantically equivalent. We're saying the same thing, but we're using a different grammar construction. Two ways to negate the past, same meaning, just different grammar. Lam yadhab and ma dhahaba. So you'll see both in the Quran. You'll see lam plus fi'r madhar majzum or ma plus fi'r madhi. What does lam al amr mean? This is a very common construction you'll see in the Quran. Fal yaf'al, fal yaf'alu, fal yaf'al, fal yaf'alu. Now this entire phrase is actually a collection of three different components. There is a fa in the front, and then we see that lam, that lam with the zukun, and then yaf'al. So this lam is actually your lam al-amr. It's your lam al-amr, li yaf'al. When we put all three together, we have fa li yaf'al, but then we change the haraka into a sukun. So this is kind of like an abbreviation. Fal yaf'al. The, the product is fal yaf'al. The same thing for fal yaf'alu. Originally, it's fa li yaf'alu. Squeezing all three together into a single phrase, fal yaf'alu. An example from Surah Al-Quraysh, fal ya'budu, fal ya'budu, which means, so let them worship. So, lam al-amr is a command. The meaning is, let, let, so let them worship. Or, fal nadhab, so let us go. Fal nadhab, li nadhab ila al-masjid, let us go to the masjid. Its function is as a command. And the verb, Following it must be in the majzum case. Whenever you see or hear fal, fal, fal ya'budu, the following verb must be in the mudari majzum. So this is something to listen for in the Quran. To summarize, lam and lam al-amr are jawazim. When they occur before present tense, we have to use al-fi'r mudari al-majzum. Some examples of al-fi'r mudari' al-majzum taken from the Qur'an. Pay attention to the jazim as well as the marker. يَحْسَبُونَ الْأَحْزَابَ لَمْ يَذْهَبُوا The jazim here is lam, used to negate the past. يَذْهَبُوا What did we do? We dropped the noon and left the well with an alif. The marker is hadf and noon, dropping of the noon. And this is a form of one verb. Example number two. وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَلَمْ يُحَاجِرُوا Again, لَمْ لَمْ is the jazim and the marker here is dropping of the noon حَذْ النُون يُحَاجِرُوا We see the alif, this tells us we have a form 3 verb حَاجَرَ يُحَاجِرُونَ Form 3 فَلْتَقُمْ طَائِفَةٌ مِّنْهُمْ معك. So we have فَلْ فَلْ this, like I described in the previous slide, is lam al-amr, lam al-amr. In this construction, it takes a sukun, fa li taqum, fal taqum. So the jazim is lam al-amr. What's the marker? The sukun on top of the noon, fal taqum. And this is an example of a form one verb. Well, yashhad عَذَابَهُمَا طَائِفَةٌ مِّنَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ So this is very similar to فَلْ يَفْعَلْ Except instead of the فَا we have a وَاو We have a وَاو A different conjunction وَلْ يَشْهَدْ But it's the same same case The لَمْ الْأَمْرُ Now takes a sukun وَلْ يَشْهَدْ وَلْ يَشْهَدْ This is لَمْ الْأَمْرُ as the jazim And the alama is the sukun This is a form one verb يَشْهَدْ Last example, أَفَلَمْ يَسِيرُوا فِي الْأَرْضِ We have lam as the jazim. Dropping of the noon, yasiru. In the four, it's yasiruna. And then the form, this is a form one verb. So that concludes our discussion about the different alamat 
and the different Nawaslib and Jawazim. So basically, we have a very, a very comprehensive, very complete background uh, introduction to the present tense. We've covered all three cases, and we've covered those special conditions and factors that require us to use different cases, and we've also covered the different markers. So now I want to summarize all of that information because it's a lot of new information for you. I want to summarize in two simple diagrams, inshallah. So diagram number one, we're trying to answer the question, which present tense case do we use? Which present tense case do we use? Do we use the modal for, the mansub, or the majzum? So this depends. We have the presence of special factors or the absence of special factors. If we don't have any special factors present, the default case always is the modal four. If we do have special factors present, we must look at the factor and decide what what is it. So if it's la mata'alil or an or any nawasib, then we have to use the mansub. If the special factor is a jawazim, such as lam or lam al-amr, then we have to use the majzum. Very, very simple flow chart. This allows us to figure out exactly which case, which case ending to use. Now, the next question is, after we decide which case to use, what's the correct marker? So diagram number two answers the question, which marker do we use? Organized by column, we have the three different cases, al nurfur Al-Mansub, Al-Majzum. And ordered by row, we have our pronouns broken down into two groups. On the top, we have huwa, hiya, anta, ana, and nahnu. Huwa yaf'al, hiya taf'al, anta taf'al, ana af'al, nahnu naf'al. These verbs, the, uh, the verbs conjugated for these pronouns take the dhamma, fatha, and sukun markers for the marfu', mansub, and majzub, respectively. So these verbs take the short vowels, the harakat, dhamma, fatha, and sukun. On the other hand, if we have verbs, verbs conjugated for anti, antum, and hum, taf'alina, taf'aluna, and yaf'aluna, the marker for the marfu' is the presence of the noon, yaf'aluna called thubut and noon, the presence of the noon. But in the mansub and the majzub, we drop the noon. Yaf'alu, taf'alu, taf'ali. That's called hadf and noon. So these are the markers. We can either have short vowels or the presence or the dropping of the noon. This is a quick review, a summary of lesson number five and the material we just covered in this session. We learned that the Arabic verbal noun is called the mustar, and this has the same meaning, roughly, equivalent to the word running in the sentence, running is fun. The Arabic verbal noun functions just like a noun would function. We learned the Arabic verb forms 2, 3, 4, and 5 in this lesson. Each form consists of a fixed, unique, past tense, present tense, and verbal noun pattern. And we used fa, ayn, and lam as the placeholder root. So here's a chart summarizing all four forms, forms two, three, four, and five. We learned that Arabic words can have either variable endings, mu'araba, or fixed endings, mabniya. Examples of mu'araba words include most, asma, nouns in Arabic, or the present tense verbs, al-af'al mudari'. Examples of words that are mabniya include past tense verbs, as well as pronouns, and the feminine plural. Uh, present tense verbs. So present tense verbs are all more araba. They all take variable endings depending on the presence of special factors except except for the feminine plural verbs for hunna and antunna. Those are mabniya. What are the three present tense verb case endings? al marfur is used in the absence of any special factors. It's the default form. Its markers are the dhamma or thubut and nun. Al-Mansub is used in the presence of Nawaslib, such as An and La Mata'alil. Its markers are Al-Fatha and Hadth and Noon. And last but not least, the Majzum case is used after Jawazim, such as Lam and Lam al-Amr. Its markers are the Sub.